Hello and welcome to the video Spring MVC and JDBC CRUD tutorial with me Nama Ming from CodeJava.net In this video tutorial, I will guide you how to develop a, a Spring MVC web application that uses a JDBC to access the database to perform uh, CRUD operations uh, create, retrieve, update and uh, delete In this uh, video tutorial, you will be able to develop the following Java Spring MVC web application that looks like this. This is the home page of the application contact manager. Uh, you see in the home page, uh, it displays uh, all the contact information in a table format like this. There's a hyperlink new contact that allows the user to create a new contact and the new contact form appears uh, like this with a uh, for fields name email address and telephone after entering the details uh, the end user can click the save button uh, to save the information into the database and then uh, the contact list uh, has updated. The end user can also click the edit hyperlink uh, next to each contact to update the information. And we use the same form for both uh, create new contact and edit uh, contact. And the end user can also click the delete hyperlink uh, next to each contact to remove the contact from uh, the database. And in this video tutorial, I'm using the following software programs uh, Java Development Kit or JDK, Eclipse IDE for Enterprise Java Developers, uh, Apache Tomcat Server, and MySQL Community Server. Uh, so make sure that you have uh, these software programs installed on your computer before following this uh, video tutorial. You can use the latest versions of all these software programs. And the technologies uh, we are going to use in this uh, video tutorial, including Spring Framework 5, we use Spring MVC and Spring ZDBC to access a relational database. We use Java Servlet API. The Java Server patch this. JSP for the view layer and we we'll also use JSTL or JSP standard track library uh, mixed with JSP and HTML code uh, to view the view basis and we use MySQL Connector Java this is a JDBC driver to allow our Java web application to work with the uh, MySQL database and we use Maven to manage dependency for the project and during the development we used the unit for unit testing and here are the steps uh, which you need to follow to develop uh, Java Spring MVC web application using ZDBC to access original database First, we need to create a MySQL database and then we create a Java web project with Maven support in Eclipse IDE and then we specify the dependency we need to use the uh, mentioned uh, technologies and then we code a model class uh, to map a Java class to a table in the database and then we code the DIO classes and perform unit tests and then we configure Spring MVC dispatcher submit to enable our Java web application to run uh, running on a Spring MVC uh, container and then we configure Spring MVC to use Spring ZDBC and then we code the Spring controller class to handle requests from the clients. 
and then we code the JSP best using HTML and JSDL for the view layer. And finally, we test the application. First, let's create a database uh, to be managed by our Java Spring MVC web application. As you can see, you see uh, the home page of the application and uh, the information we need to manage is name, email, arrest, and telephone. So now I'm going to use the MySQL command line like Web to access the database server, MySQL database server, enter the password. Okay. And type the command create uh, database and then the database name is contact db. Okay, you can verify by typing the command show databases and you see the contact db and database got created here. And now let's create a table. First, we need to connect to that database, connect contact db. Now we use uh, mass SQL statement to create a table. Create table. Table name is contact. And the first uh, field is always the uh, uh, primary key contact underscore ID. Each data type is integer. 11 is the size of the data type not no and auto increment so the values of this uh, column uh, will be generated by the database server and the second column is the name name of the contact is data type is vacha uh, maximum is 45 characters not no and the third column is email vacha 45 not no. And the fourth column is address. This data is also vacha 100 maximum characters. Not no. And uh, the last column is phone. Vacha uh, 15. Not no. And finally, we specify the primary key for the table uh, is uh, uh, contact underscore ID field. Enter. Okay. Uh, the table got created. You can check by typing the command show tables. You see, we have one table contact here, and you can uh, type the command and dash. Uh, contact to see the structure of the table. You see, this is the structure of the table we have created with five fields contact underscore ID, name, email, arrest, and phone. Okay, so far so good. And you can uh, execute the select uh, statement to select all those from the contact table. And you see, the table is now empty. Next. Uh, let's create a Java project uh, in Eclipse IDE. You see, this is my Eclipse IDE. And click the menu file, new, uh, dynamic, uh, web project. And the project name is, um, contact manager. Click, uh, next. Uh, next and uh, just uh, finish. You will see uh, the Java project, dynamic web project, contact manager uh, got created here. And now let's convert this uh, project to uh, Maven project. Right click and uh, configure. Convert uh, to Maven project. You see here. And the group ID is uh, 
ở package name net dot code java dot contact artifact id is contact manager packaging is work ok and click uh, finish you see uh, the java dynamic web project is now having uh, maven support you can see the uh, maven project file pom dot xml file uh, appears here and uh, let's specify the dependency uh, for the technologies uh, we are going to use in this project uh, such as Spring uh, Framework, Spring MVC, uh, MySQL Connector Java, uh, Submit API, ZSTL and so on and click here to see the uh, XML code of the Maven project object or model bomb.xml file here Yeah, specify a properties to store the version of the Spring Framework properties. Spring dot version. Uh, as of now, the current version of Spring Framework is 5.1.9 for release. You can switch to the dependency visual view to add a dependency yeah, for Spring Framework is um, org dot Spring Framework artifact ID is uh, Spring Context. This is the core of the Spring uh, Framework version. We use a uh, property Spring dot version. Spring dot version. Okay, click OK. You can see the XML code uh, is uh, generated like this. Save the file, and uh, you can see. In the library is here, Maven DBNC here. Uh, Maven automatically uh, downloads uh, the required jar files for Spring context you see here. And the second dependency we need to use is Spring uh, Web MVC. So we can copy and paste uh, this XML code and uh, modify a little bit. For Spring Web MVC, Web MVC, we use the same version. And the next uh, dependency is for Spring ORM, which uh, provides uh, interface and classes to work with uh, JDBC. Okay, set the form of XML file and you will see Maven automatically downloads the jar files and they uh, appear here. Very good, right? You can see Spring JDBC here, Spring Web MVC. Okay. And for Java Servlet, we need to uh, Specify a dependency for the Servlet API, JSP API. Paste and modify the group IDs for 
Java service is Java X dot service, and artifact ID is uh, Java X dot service hyphen API. Uh, the version of service API is uh, four point zero point one. And uh, also, we need to specify dependency for the SP API. The vax dot subdit dot the SP. And uh, here it is the uh, vax dot subdit dot the SP hyphen API. And the version is uh, 2.3.3. And we also need uh, dependency for the STL. The STL is um, artifact ID is the STL version is one point two. Okay, save the file and. Here we see Maven downloads the required Java files for Soviet API, the SP API, and the STL here. And the last dependency we need to use is for ZDBC driver for MySQL database. You can specify here at group ID is uh, MySQL and artifact ID is MySQL hyphen connector hyphen java and the version is 1.5.1.46 ok save the file and you will see Maven automatically downloads MySQL connector java java file here and let's create our java main package in the source folder here now I click new package enter the package name is net.codejava contact finish and we will write a java code a java classes under this uh, package and before writing a uh, code let's review the class diagram to understand the uh, Design of the uh, project. You see, first we have the model class contact that maps uh, to the contact table in the database. This uh, the, this model class uh, contains fields ID, name, email, address, and phone. And we in the DIO and data access layer, we define an interface a contact DIO that uh, specifies the uh, key operations save, update, uh, read, delete, list and we will write an implementation of the contact DIO interface is contact uh, DIO IMPL implementation yeah. in this class we have uh, ZDBC template uh, to use uh, Spring JDBC to work with uh, the relational database, and we implement the methods defined by the interface contact DIO, save, update, get, delete. And uh, in this project, we use JUnit uh, for unit testing. We will test the methods of the contact DAO implementation class. This is a unit test class contact DAO test and in the control layer controller layer in the web layer we we code uh, a main controller spring controller that handle request from the clients and uh, uh, it will call the contact DAO to perform uh, uh, database operation and forward the request to the view page JSP page See in the main controller we have a uh, reference to the contact DIO interface here. And for the configuration 
uh, we uh, use uh, Java configuration, Java config and uh, annotation instead of XML. So we we write code for the web app initializer class to bootstrap Spring and we see dispatcher service, and we configure uh, Spring and we see stuff in the Spring and we see config class here. We will config uh, configure view resolver data source and contact DAO. So that's an overview of the interface and uh, classes we are going to code uh, in this project. So you can have a um, high level overview. So far we have done the four first four steps create mask, query database, uh, create project, specify dimensions, and now let's uh, write code for the domain model class. The cartel the contact uh, class. Okay. So create a new sub package here, not module. And create a new Java class here. The class name is you know, contact. You see. Let's refresh. Okay, you see in the database uh, in the contact table we have four fields: contact underscore ID, name, email, address, and phone. And similarly, uh, we uh, define uh, four uh, fields in the Java model class to map with this table. First is uh, ID integer ID. And the second view is name. Email. Address and phone. Okay. And uh, Generate uh, constructors, setters, and getters for this uh, domain model class. Very simple. So generate constructor using fuse here. So all the fuse and click OK. And uh, also we need to generate a getter and setter. So generate getters and setter. Select all. Click um, OK. And you see. Very quick, right? And uh, reformat the code. Format. Yeah. You see. OK. So that's for the uh, domain model class. Next, let's write code for the DIO classes and uh, perform a unit test with uh, the unit. Uh, we we write code for the uh, contact DL interface, contact DL implementation, and contact DL test. Create a new Java package here for the DIO layer. So package net dot code Java dot contact dot DIO. Finish. And create a new Java interface here. Interface. The name of the interface is contact DIO. Finish. We have the interface here and we Edify the uh, uh, CRUD methods, save, update, get, delete, and list. First is a save method, update in save, contact, contact. This method return an integer number. 
uh, if greater than zero, meaning that the uh, contact is successfully saved into the database. We need to add import for this class contact, and the second method is um, update contact contact, and the third method third method is get method that return a contact uh, from the specified ID, and the fourth method is delete. Public in delete, delete contact by ID. And the last method is a list method that uh, returns all the contacts uh, from the database. So this method returns a list collection. List contact list. Okay, that's for the interface contact DAO. And next, let's uh, code the uh, contact the implementation class. Yeah. Refresh. New class. Name is contact DAO implementation. IMPL. This super interface is, uh, the contact DIO interface. Yeah, you see. Okay. Finish. And we need to write code to provide concrete implementation for the methods defined by the super interface contact DIO. And the Spring uh, JDBC provides a JDBC template class to work with the JDBC. It simplifies uh, programming with uh, relational database using JDBC. Uh, so in this class, we uh, declare a JDBC template here. JDBC template. JDBC template. Uh, the JDBC template class uh, needs to take a data source you know, object to get information to connect to the database. So, in the constructor of this class, we, we pass uh, data source. So, generate a constructor for this class. Go to constructor, public contact. DIO We have a parameter for the data source data source and in this constructor we create a new instance of the JDBC template class new JDBC template and that takes the data source Okay. What is the error? Duplicate modifier. Okay. And, uh, Later, when uh, we write unit test card, we will uh, provide a uh, data source for this uh, DAO class. And now let's implement code for the safe method that uh, uh, saves uh, contact object as a row in the database. So let's see how to uh, do this with the Spring uh, JDBC. So first we need to define the SQL statement uh, to insert 
uh, a new row into the contact table insert into contact and specify the list of columns is name email uh, address and phone let's check the fields in the database here yeah. yeah, name email address and phone we don't specify the contact underscore id and field because this value is automatically generated and values some uh, placed out of question marks here and to up execute this SQL we can uh, call the uh, update method of the JDBC template class uh, that takes the SQL statement and then the values for the arguments for the parameters Contact C, C red name, C red email, C red address, C red phone. The order of the uh, arguments here must should match the orders of the parameters here in the SQL statement. This update method return an integer number. Uh, indicate the number of rows affected in the database so we can uh, return uh, the return value of this method in this set method return delete this okay Okay, and now let's write uh, init test class to test this uh, set method. Create a new source folder for the test source folder. Uh, set project name, contact manager, and folder name is test. And uh, right click on the Contact DAO interface here and create new as a um, type JUnit here and select a JUnit test guy. Next, we choose a uh, new JUnit Jupyter test. And we choose the source folder is a test folder. Okay. Um, click next and select all method uh, to write test. Finish. As the image file library to the view part. Okay. Here we go the test class, and we write code for the test set method first. Uh, as you can see, is a contact DAO implementation class requires a data source object so we define a data source object in this test class to specify the connection information for the relational database so we declare a data source object here uh, in uh, we use a driver manager data source provided by spring jdbc driver manager and data source here data source When we create a new instance of the data source object, new driver manager data source, and we set the connection information for the database, um, such as the driver class name. Uh, for MySQL, the driver, the fully qualified name of the uh, driver class is com.mysql.jdbc.driver. And we specify the URL to connect to the database. And the URL is ZDBC colon MySQL colon double forward slash is localhost is the rest of the database server and default port number is 3306 
the database name is contact DB. You see uh, the database name contact DB. Yeah, contact DB. Okay. And set the username and password. Here, user username is uh, root, and password is password. Set password. Okay. And uh, we declare is a few. Or type contact DIL here. Note that we use an interface, not the class DIL. And in this method, we create a new instance of the DIL, contact DIL using the implementation contact DIL implementation passing the data source. Okay. And the set method of the Contact DIO implementation class requires the contact object. So we create a new contact object here. Contact contact equal new contact. Import the contact class. Uh, we need to have uh, another constructor that uh, doesn't take the ID. It, it takes only name, email, address, and phone. So we copy this. Remove the ID field here. Okay, and modify this a little bit. This name, email address, phone. Okay. And now we can use a constructor that uh, doesn't take the ID because when creating a new contact, we uh, don't have to specify the ID. The value of the ID field is automatically generated. Name is uh, Steve Jobs. Email is uh, Steve at Apple dot com. Address is. Uh, Address is, uh, for example, Cupertino, California, and phone number is one seven zero zero one two three four five six seven eight nine. Okay. We need to make this uh, contractor public. Okay, and we call now uh, save contact. Okay, this method return an integer value so we can use this uh, return value to assert result. Uh, if the contact uh, has been uh, Instead of successfully, the result is greater than zero. So we use assert two. Uh, result greater than zero. Okay. <coughs> now let's run this test method. Let's check the database first. Uh, select all rows from the contact table, and you see the table is uh, empty. Empty. 
Now let's run this that shape method. Um, right click here. Run as uh, JV test. And you see the green bar appears here indicating that uh, the test has been uh, successful. Test set, you see, with a green check mark here. And uh, let's uh, check the database. Uh, execute the SQL statement again. You see, there's a new row inserted into the contact table with the contact ID 1, name Steve Jobs, email steepenable.com arrest exactly what we specify in the test case here very good right so that means uh, the same method is uh, correctly implemented and you see using uh, Spring JDBC uh, we have to write SQL statement uh, it is not uh, easy and as using Hibernate, but uh, for uh, small uh, applications, we can use ADBC for simpler because it's simple. Okay, and let's modify the values here to insert another contact, for example, Bill West. Email is view uh, at microsoft.com. The rest is uh, Redmond, Washington State. Phone number is uh, 1800124567289. Okay, now let's run this 10 method again. You can right click here and uh, run. Test has been uh, successful. Now let's check the database and you see there are two rows here. The second row is PUS. You see. And now let's implement code for the uh, update method here. Update. We also need to specify the SQL statement here update statement update contact set name equal the question mark indicating a parameter email equal question mark address equal question mark phone equal question mark where contact underscore idea equal question mark and similarly to the save method we return the uh, value of the update method on the JDBC JMS class update and SQL and passing the value for the values for the parameter C get name C get email address phone and ID ID okay and now let's arrive uh, in the test method or the update method let's update here Now we need to reuse the uh, data source and uh, contact DL implementation uh, class in the test class here. So it's better to move uh, this initialization code of the data source and DL class to uh, uh, before each class. So you need to use the before each annotation. Or the method that has called uh, before each test method is executed.
uh, waiting for the auto completion of Eclipse before each year. And the method name is uh, void setup before each. We copy the code that initialize the data source and the DAO class here to this method. Okay. So we won't have duplicate code in the test methods. Now in the test update method, we also declare a new contact object and uh, with ID for example I want to update the contact ID to the west so ID 2 here I want to update the um, email address of the west view dot get Okay, and call update method on the DAO instance. Okay, and we also assert to that the result is greater than zero. Okay, now let's run this test update method. I'm going to click here on this regime test. And you see the test has been successful for the test update method. Let's check the database. You see email of BWAIT is view at microsoft.com. And now let's query again. And you see it is updated to view uh, uh, dot guest at microsoft.com. Very good, right? And next, let's implement code for the red method that returns a contact object based on a given ID. So the red method here. We also need to specify a SQL statement. Change SQL equal to. You see the select statement. Select asterisk or select all from the contact table where contact underscore id equal plus id and to uh, query Execute a query that returns a result set uh, with Spring JDBC. We need to define a result set extractor class well, to map the values in the result set to a model object. So here I declare a result set extractor class here. Result set extractor type the contact extractor new we this is the syntax to create a new uh, anonymous class RS, RS. this uh, callback method extract data uh, we get uh, invoked by Spring JBDBC and when a uh, data is found, data is result, you return in the query. So in this method, we check if uh, the result has a record result as dot next, and we uh, read the value from the result set. Let change. 
name name email address and phone name email address address and phone and return a new contact object return new contact with the given ID ID name email address and phone okay otherwise if the result doesn't contain uh, any rows will return no okay and uh, we return the DBC template we call the DBC template and the query method that take a SQL statement and a result set extractor yeah extractor okay and this will return a contact object because we declare the other result set extractor for the domain monocast contact here and now let's write unit test method to test this get method in the contact DL test class here the test get method here first we specify ID of the contact for example ID 0 and uh, we call DAO get method pass it the ID and this return a contact object contact and we use a uh, assert uh, not no statement uh, if the contact is far now let's run this test method and since uh, I specify the ID is zero and you can see in the database we doesn't have uh, it doesn't have any uh, rows with ID zero so this test should fail now let's run this test again method You see the test fail with the red indicator by appears here. Now let's uh, change the ID to ID one, uh, which is the ID of the first record in the first row in the table. Now let's run again and the test should uh, be passed. You see the test uh, passed with the green indicator bar here uh, we can uh, print the information of the contact here if the contact is not known if contact not known print the information of the contact and we need to override the touching method in this class to pin the information. Right click here, source uh, override element method, then to generate to string and select all the fields to generate. Okay, and let's run this test case method again. And you see it brings the information of the contact with ID1 name Steve Jobs, email Steve at apple.com. Very good, right? So far, we have done implementing the red method for the contact DIO. And next, let's uh, implement the uh, delete method for the contact DIO. Delete method here. Yeah in the interface and delete method in the implementation in class the delete method defined by the interface contact DAO here and in the implementation class close this the delete method here
uh, we uh, write a SQL statement to delete uh, delete uh, from contact uh, where contact underscore id equal id and we simply return the value of the update method on the zdbc template object zdbc template update let's clear now let's uh, write unit test for this method in the contact DL test class let's delete here we specify id is 2 let's see id 2 here in the database is for BOS and uh, result equal DL delete ID the answer the result is greater than zero answer two is okay now, now let's run this test method test delete then we test and you see the test has passed successfully and let's uh, check uh, the database run the query select again and you see now there's only one row Steve Jobs the row view waste, uh, has been removed very good right and you can change the ID here to ID 3 and now the uh, test it should fail because there's no row with ID 3 you see the test fail very good, right? And now let's implement the last method defined by the contact DL interface the list method that returns a list of contact uh, objects uh, from the database. In this implementation class, the list method here, we uh, first we need to specify a SQL statement. SQL statement is select uh, asterisk select all from the contact table. And to uh, execute this uh, SQL statement that uh, return one or more rows, we use a uh, uh, Query method of the ZDBC uh, template class query method that takes SQL statement and a uh, uh, row mapper. So before uh, calling the query method, we Create a row mapper here. A row mapper. A row mapper class. A row mapper for the domain model class contact. A row mapper. New a row mapper anonymous class. Similar to the result set extractor in the red method here. You see. This would be as row number you can copy this code we also need to read ID of the contact. In this uh, ID equal result set get in contact underscore ID. Okay, and pass the row mapper 
do uh, the query method here and this method return a list of contact object so we can return here okay now let's write unit test method for this uh, list method in the contact DL test class here we have list method here list contact list contacts equal DAO list and we assert that uh, this list is uh, not empty so we use assert statement assert true assert not true Assert to uh, list contact is empty because it's empty return true if the list is empty so we need to uh, negate this okay and run this test method test list run as really test And you see the test uh, has passed successfully. Uh, we can uh, use the for loop to print uh, each contact here. Contact uh, contact in the contact list. Print a uh, contact. And now run this uh, test method again. You see it prints uh, one row. Uh, for the contact uh, step jobs because in the database we have only one row here uh, we can uh, run the test step method again to insert uh, another row be west run as test successful uh, let, let's check you see two rows contact id 1 and id 3 and now let's run the test list method again. Test list. Now it should print two rows. You see, it prints contact ID 1 and contact ID 3. Exactly what we have in the database. Very good, right? So you see, with uh, Spring uh, JDBC, uh, it simplifies uh, database programming. Uh, as you can see, we just focused on writing SQL statement and call various uh, methods of the JDBC template class. Uh, we don't have to create a new connection. We don't have to create statement. We don't have to uh, close the connection. Uh, all the boilerplate code is handled by Spring JDBC. Yes, you can see it simplifies a uh, database programming. It is more complex than using Hypernet, but compared with uh, pure JDBC code, it is uh, simpler. You see, just focus on writing SQL statement and call uh, the methods of the JDBC template class. And provide a, a row member or result set extractor to extract information from the result set. So that's uh, very simple to use Spring JDBC. And we need also to declare a data source here, data source object that contains information for the database. Okay, so far we have done writing code for the DIO. And data access object layer, uh, contact DL interface, contact DL implementation class, contact DL test. Uh, you see, uh, done. And now let's uh, write code to bootstrap our Java web project, uh, the web app initializer class 
to uh, bootstrap Spring uh, Dispatcher uh, service class to run Spring MVC application and Spring MVC config to uh, configure data source, uh, view resolver, and contact DIO. Okay, come back to our Eclipse project and create a new sub package here. Net.codesavan.contact.config and we create a new uh, class is um, web app initializer and uh, this class implements the interface. Uh, click the add button here. Search for the interface uh, in web application initializer here. Okay, finish and we write code to push up the Spring MVC and dispatcher circuit. Uh, in this on startup method, in this name uh, parameter should be circuit context. Annotation config web application context app context because uh, in this project we use annotations instead of XML configuration. So we create a new annotation configure application context here. <coughs> And we rest the uh, config class. Uh, it should be serving MVC config dot class. And click here to create the class. Swing MVC config. Okay. And we rest the uh, Spring Dispatcher circuit using service registration and dynamic interface dispatcher equal circuit context add circuit. The circuit name is uh, Spring Dispatcher. And this is a, a new dispatcher circuit. New dispatcher circuit. Passing the application context. Okay. And we specify the mapping for this dispatcher. Um, add mapping. We add the forward slash to map. Uh, this uh, dispatcher service to handle all the requests to this application and we set the priority in load on startup for this dispatcher service set for load on startup priority is uh, one high priority okay so this is for the uh, web application initializer to a bootstrap Spring MVC application. And now let's write code for the Spring MVC config class to configure configure uh, Spring MVC. We annotate this class with the configuration annotation uh, to indicate that this is a configuration class.
my grid has a problem with the content exit configuration here and uh, use the uh, annotation enable web MVC and use the annotation component scan to uh, allow us to tell, uh, tell Spring Framework to scan Java classes or configuration specify the play package play package is uh, net.codejava.contact And this class should implement the uh, web MVC configurer class provided by Spring Framework. Import. And first, we need to declare a data source bin. Bin public. Data source. Get data source. Import bin annotation. Import data source. Uh, we can copy the code that uh, creates data source from the test class here. Data source. The driver manage the data source. Copy and paste. Here. Return the data source. Okay. And next we need to configure a view resolver uh, to uh, map uh, logical view names in uh, Spring Controller uh, to physical uh, view files. So this uh, method should be uh, been public view resolver. Get view resolver. Import. We declare internal result view resolver. Resolver equal new. We set the uh, uh, Prefix. The prefix is uh, slash web inf views slash and uh, set the suffix uh, is dot jsp and return this resolver object. Okay, so this this tells Spring MVC to map logical view name with physical uh, view places and. Uh, the last bin we need to uh, create is a uh, implementation for the contact DIL bin public contact DIL red contact DIL we create a new contact DIL implementation DAL equal new contact DAL implementation class passing the data source uh, we call the web data source method okay and return the DAL so we just return new sort okay 
to add import for the contact DAO interface here. Okay, that's for the configuration for Spring MVC. We configure the data source, you know, view resolver, and uh, a bin for the contact DAO implementation. So far, so good. We have done the seven steps. Now, let's uh, do the last three steps go to Spring Controller class. Go to the SP pages and test the uh, application. Okay. Now we can uh, create a Spring uh, Controller class under a new package, a sub package. Net.codejava.contact.controller and create a new Spring uh, Controller class. The name is main controller okay annotate this uh, class with the controller annotation that import okay and let's uh, code a handler method to handle request to the uh, web applications homepage for example stream public stream home return index uh, index is a view name and specify a request mapping annotation and uh, specify value is a uh, UI mapping forward slash to map to the application's uh, context root okay so in the web content folder under web inf we need to create a new directory um, views views because in the Spring MVC configuration we specify is a prefix here is web inf uh, forward slash views here so all view based zsp based should be placed here and there's a views directory here clear new zsp based here new zsp file the name is index Title is contact manager, and in the body of the page we just show a heading for the testing purpose. Contact manager application. Okay, now we can uh, deploy this application on Tomcat server and test the home page. I did it this uh, project now. Add and remove and choose contact manager here. Finish. Okay, now start the server. Save. Let's see the login information in the console. We got an error here. Let's see. The var.ut.zip.zip .zip .zip exception invalid. LOC header. Okay. Let's see. We have a depart. Let's clean the project. I think some uh, graph files is uh, were corrupted. 
So let's clean the project and start the server again. Start. Mm -hmm. We want the same exception. For this kind of problem, you can try to uh, delete all the jar files in the Maven local repository. Uh, open my computer and uh, normally uh, the Maven uh, local repository is located under the users folder admin and the folder not m2 here repository and delete all the jar files here yes and uh, then skip some the files are being used by eclipse so let's skip Okay. Now let's uh, use the project again. Uh, update Maven. Maven. Uh, update project. Okay. And wait for a walk for a while. Why Maven is updating the Maven dependency for the project. Done. Now let's start the server again. You see, the error has gone and now we have uh, the server is up and running and you can see the uh, spring dispatcher servlet is initialized and the server is listening on port 8080 here you see spring uh, framework dispatcher servlet here okay now we can open our uh, web browser I use Chrome. Ties the URL is HTTP local host eighty uh, eighty. Enter. Sorry, we need also ties the application name which contact manager. You see, we see the index homepage contact manager. Exactly what we write code in the index.jsp here. That means our Java web uh, Spring MVC web application is up and uh, running. As per the user interface design, as you can see here, the homepage of our web application displays a list of uh, contacts. That looks like this, you see. So we modify the code in the controller method here to get a list of contacts from the database. And in the main controller class, we uh, declare a reference to the contact DAO. Uh, interface contact EIO. And with Spring MVC, we can use the auto Y annotation to let Spring uh, Framework automatically uh, 
detect and inject an instant of the contact PAO uh, into this you know, controller in the Spring MVC uh, configuration class you can see we have the con get contact DAL method that returns uh, an implementation of contact DAL so the Spring Framework we call this method to inject an instance of the contact DAL uh, to the controller class now uh, change the uh, update the method and the method will return the model and view model and view object the method name is now list contact and it takes a model and view parameter and return model In this method, we uh, get a list of contacts uh, from the contact EIO, contact EIO list. Import contact class and uh, set an um, object to the model. List contact is the name of the attribute and value is a list collection and set the view name it is index set view name for the model okay <coughs> Now let's update the code of the index.jsp page to display uh, the uh, list of contacts uh, like this. You see, uh, Tomcat automatically reloads uh, the changes we have made to the main controller class. And you can see the message uh, reloading context with name, contact manager here. index.jsp contact manager oh. we reformat the HTML code here ok Use the diff, center the diff, and the heading of the page contact list. And we use table to display uh, the table of contacts like this. Table the first row is a header no name email address phone and uh, action action save the page and now you can refresh you see no name email arrest phone action we set border for the table border equal border size is 1 
and set a cell body value to add five pixel to the table of cells. And to read the uh, um, data sent from the main controller handler method here, the list contact object here, we need to use the str tag uh, for each tag. So in the head of the page, we should declare tag lib. A directive for the str here. Tag lib. URI is http java.sun.com vsp forward slash vsdl forward slash call and the prefix is c ok now we can use the vsdl for each, each tag c for each to add that iterate through uh, element in the list contact items is the name of the collection list contact this name should match the name we uh, specify in the handler method here list contact and for each element we assign a variable name contact And we also need to use a base bar status. Okay, and now for each element in the list contact, we uh, display the value for name, email, arrest, phone. Okay. In the first column is a uh, ordinal number status index plus one and the uh, value for the cell at the second column is contact name contact dot name let's refresh the page and you can see name steep jobs and be west and we do the same for the remaining uh, columns name, email, phone, address, contact.email, contact.address, contact.phone, save and refresh and you see there's a list of contact uh, rest display and next let's write code to allow uh, the user to create a new contact you see there's a hybrid new contact under the heading here and when the user clicks on this hybrid the new the new contact form appears that looks like this okay so first we need to add a hybrid here under the heading user heading uh, 3 hybrid New contact. The URL relative really URL of the hybrid is new. Refresh and you will see the hybrid new contact here. Uh, clicking the hybrid new beef uh, for zero for error because we haven't uh, implemented a handler method for this. A relative URL yet, so we need to add a new handler method for that URL in the main controller class here. You see, you can copy the code of this this uh, contact method paste here and the uh, you are mapping here is forward slash new the so name of the method is new contact mm. 
we specify the method uh, equal to request method get and uh, in the new contact form we show an empty contact so create a new empty contact object here new contact add object to the model the name is contact and value is a contact object we need to have an uh, empty no argument contractor for the uh, domain model class contact public contact okay and we set the view name is the uh, contact underscore form now let's create a JSP page contact underscore form of JSP and there's a view directory here new JSP file contact underscore form finished and the uh, title is uh, let's see new or edit contact because, uh, because uh, we use the same form for both creating new contact or and editing new contact editing new contact okay save the file now let's try to click new contact here and you see a blank page appears no problem and now we write code to display the uh, new edit contact form that looks like this you see with uh, a form with uh, four fields name email arrest telephone and a save button we use the uh, div section line center the heading of the page is new edit contact and refresh and you will see new edit contact and in this uh, contact form we need to use spring form tag so we declare a tag lead active here tag lead uri is uh, http colon double forward slash cww Spring Framework dot org source last tax source last form and the prefix is uh, form and now we use the uh, Spring Form tag form. The action of the form is the relative URL save and method is uh, post and model attribute. Yeah, this is a very important attribute to uh, map the few values in this HTML form to a Java model class in the controller layer contact. The name of the model attribute here, contact should match with the name of the uh, model attribute contact here in the handler method. You see, and the first field is the name of the contact name.
we use a spring form tag from input and path is the name of the property of the photo class name now let's uh, refresh energy name here we do the same for the re remaining fields email arrest and uh, phone email uh, sorry email email address address phone phone save the file refresh the energy we have one two three four fuse mm -hmm. We need to use table. Refresh. Okay, so far so good. So getting five, and we. Should have the submit button, save button here yeah, in the last row of the table. This row span over two columns, so we Use attribute constant equal to, and we use a HTML tag input tag equal submit value. We save. Okay. And we center this uh, button, align center. Okay, now let's refresh. And if you see the form, new contact form appears. Very nice, right? Click save. And you want error, 404 error, because uh, we haven't uh, implemented the uh, handler method for the URL save yet. Go back and now. Uh, in the main control class, we need to implement the handler method for the URL. Save URL in the form you see here. Save here. Main controller class here. Create a new handler method to save a new contact. Click measure and view. Save contact. And note that because this handler method uh, handles submission of the contact form. Yeah. So we need to use the uh, model attribute annotation here. Module attribute contact contact to map uh, with the model attribute here. You see, so it's very important. And we specify the request mapping here and copy, copy and paste, save and method. Is post uh, because uh, in the form method of the form is post. Okay, and we call contact VIL save contact. That's very simple. 
and uh, after the contact has been uh, inserted successfully, we you know, redirect, we refresh the home page. So here yeah, we return new model and view model and view redirect to the home page. You can see to get automatically reload the changes we have made. So now let's test the create new contact function here. Then here is uh, uh, for example, let's see. Larry Pesis Larry Pesis email is Larry at gmail.com and address is Mountain View California and phone number one six zero zero nine okay click safe and you see the new contact Larry page has been inserted successfully and it uh, has display in the table here. Yeah. Let's verify in the database. Now you can see we have only three rows here. Okay, we have. Uh, sorry, previously we have two rows, now we have three rows with the newly inserted record for the contact already paste so far so good right and let's try to add another contact now is uh, Mark Zuckerberg Mark Zuckerberg email is map at facebook.com the rest is Melon Melon Park California phone number save and you see Mark Zuckerberg appears here so the great new contact function is working very well let's verify the database and you see Mark Zuckerberg here ok so far so good and next, let's write code that allows uh, the user to edit, update a contact. As you can see here, there's a hyperlink edit next to each contact here to uh, allow the user to click to edit a specific contact. So we need to update the index.csp paste here to have the hyperlink in this column last column uh, edit actually mark and the parameter is id edit and the value is uh, contact dot ID as I edit hyperlink save and refresh and you see the edit hyperlink here try to click you see we got a uh, 404 error because we have implemented a hello method for the for this URL yet okay okay now back to the main controller class and we Write a new handler method to edit uh, contact. We can uh, copy, copy this code, change the uh, request mapping to edit method is get delete this parameter. Edit contact 
and we need to get a contact object from the ID. So we specify HTTP submit request here. Submit request request. ID equal integer pass in request add parameter ID when you write a contact from the DAO contact DAO web method add ID okay. and we set this uh, contact object to the model attribute here so Copy, copy, create a new model and view object model equal new return the model add object uh, is not contact. Contact view name is and contact underscore form. Okay, you can specify the view name in the constructor of the model and view class. Okay. You can see Tomcat automatically reloads the change code changes we have made. And now, next, uh, refresh, click the edit, uh, hybrid next to the contact step off here. And you see the new edit contact form appears and now you can see the values for the fields appears zips up in the OS and phone go back try to edit viewers you see information about viewers and try to edit Larry Page see very good right and in the contact form we need to specify uh, the ID value for the ID of the contact in edit mode. So we use the uh, spring form tab hidden. Yeah, that is the uh, ID of the contact. Okay, new contact. And uh, view source, and you can see. Let's view the source code. View space shot, and you can see uh, the value for the ID is uh, empty. Okay, in the new mode, new contact mode, and now let let edit step job with ID one. Sorry, step job ID one. Okay, edit and view space source, and you can see. Now the value for the hidden field ID is 1. You see. 1 here. And uh, try to edit uh, contact mark Zuckerberg. Few pesos and you can see the value for the uh, ID is five here. Okay, so that we can differentiate uh, the contact form in uh, edit mode and new mode. In edit mode, the value for the ID is empty, and in uh, edit mode, the value for the ID is not empty. So we can reuse the uh, save contact method here. We just check for the ID uh, of the contact. If 
contact get id uh, is no we, that means the contact is new so we save else not no we update contact here update contact so that's a very simple now wait for Tomcat to reload uh, the change code change and test the edit uh, update contact uh, function okay now try to edit the uh, contact mark to come back uh, update the name here uh, change the phone number to one two three four five six seven eight nine change the rest to mark dot z okay click save and you see mark zuckerberg mark dot z phone number one two three four five six seven eight nine that means uh, the contact has been updated successfully now let's check the database and you can see mark zuckerberg mark dot z and phone number one two three four five six seven eight nine very good, right? Now let's uh, try to update the contact uh, uh, view guest edit update the email to view dot guest save and you see view dot guest here. Now let's check in the database. You see view dot guest here. So that means the uh, edit update contact function is working properly. And now let's implement the delete contact function that allows the user to uh, delete a specific contact from the database. You see, next to each contact, there's a delete hyperlink here. By clicking on this hyperlink, the uh, associated contact will be removed from the database. So now let's update the yeah, update the home page to have the hyperlink delete. Copy paste the related URL is delete with the parameter ID is contact ID. Delete, save, and uh, refresh, and you will see we have the delete hyperlink here. Click it. Okay, now let's write in here. A code handler method in the main controller class here. Uh, and copy this method. Delete it. And the name of the method is delete contact. Then uh, you can use uh, annotation uh, uh, request param to buy the value uh, of this uh, method argument to the value of the uh, query string query parameter here id here integer id. Import press param. Okay, and uh, in the body of the method, we uh, call contact EAO delete ID and we return to the home page. So we turn the model and the object with redirect. Yeah, okay. Now let's wait for Tomcat to reload the changes. Now let's, let's test the delete contact function. Refresh the home page and now I delete, allow refresh this here. Delete. You see, it got deleted. And let's check the database. 
you see we have the repairs here and now let's execute the select statement again and see uh, Rally Pest is not deleted very good, right? And let's try to delete the uh, U.S. You see, it got deleted. So, there's a delete contact uh, function has been uh, implemented uh, properly. Okay, so far I have uh, walked you through the process of developing a Spring MVC. Uh, web application using Spring JDBC to access a regional database to perform craft operations, create, retrieve, update, and delete. And you can see in the contact manage the uh, application here. Create new contact, edit, and delete, and uh, list all the function uh, uh, has been implemented and uh, working uh, very well. So you can see with Spring JDBC. Uh, it simplifies as a uh, code to work with database. Uh, we just focus on uh, uh, writing the SQL statement and call the template and methods from the JDBC template. Uh, Spring JDBC is not um, often uh, as hybrid, but uh, in some way, it simplifies uh, the coding uh, for the uh, regional database. So, that's uh, for Spring MVC and ZDBC CRUD tutorial with them. I mean, from course, Thank you for watching.